Hello everyone, how's it going? We're going to be talking about law today. I know it's a very dry subject, but we're going to try and make it relevant and interesting. Um, there are a lot of very key topics in the legal space which are relevant uh, in, in crypto, blockchain generally. It's very important to understand them, uh, especially if you're building a company in the space, you're looking to launch your own tokens, or as I've talked about several times already on this, in the space of NFTs, you know, if you're, if you're launching NFT projects, you definitely need to understand a lot of the implications here. But I want to start actually with a broader, uh, a broader discussion which is pretty important uh, and relevant from sort of what we've, some of the innovations we've seen this year regarding legal tender, right? Legal tender is, the, you know, the concept of whether, um, you know, you can transact in crypto. And recently we saw uh, that El Salvador adopted, legal, uh, adopted Bitcoin as, as, as a form of legal tender. And I'm curious to ask, you know, uh, both of you, um, whether you see this being possible now here in the Middle East, you know, it'd be very interesting to see whether um, we can see that kind of adoption and what it might do in facilitating the blockchain economy growing right now here in the UAE. Bye, but maybe we can start with you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, of course, it's a very interesting question, and uh, there have been a lot of views already spread it out. And so, first of all, I think that uh, following the previous speaker, uh, professor from Lebanon American University, I think that the beauty and actually why the Bitcoin is so popular and why the cryptocurrencies appear, because to have an alternative. So somehow people and society were disappointed with the traditional fiat currency, and that was why we are talking that there is an alternative, and this is, it means that it's obligatory, we don't need to rush behind the traditional uh, currencies and to be recognized is at an equal level as a legal tender obligatory, so it's more about the will and desire between the parties to accept as a value. And I think that's what's happening, and we are talking about maybe more about the mass adoption to, mass, to, to provide the more like a legal regulatory a framework to, to encourage companies and people to use Bitcoin. But you know, the only like a legal recognition as a legal tender, I think it's even not so important. So it's all about if the government is ready to accept taxes, for example, to be paid in... in, in uh, and uh, cryptocurrency, and if you talk about UAE, there is no taxes almost, you know, that's from that point of view, you know, the going to direction of the recognition of legal tender, it's, it could be quite easy, actually. Any views, Jana? Um, I would say that financial system and payment system in general in the world is a little bit obsolete. So there are some definitely issues, and especially if you speak about that the world became so global these days, but sometimes you have to wait for the payments, you know, really for days between countries, why correspondent banks, you know, all these currencies change. It's a little bit outdated for the, I would say, for the energy, for the globalization that we have now. So that's why when traditional financial system does not provide the proper and adequate response, this system became a little bit replaced. So some new systems such as Bitcoin and all the crypto assets and um, digital assets just showing up. Mm -hmm. But I would say probably we should not really just rush, you know, and blindly follow and uh, I would say like destroy whatever we have and completely build a very new system. I think the idea is in synergy. So we have traditional system that was there already for centuries, for years, for like God knows how much time. And yes, we have now a new digital environment, we have new generation, we have a new approach, we have globalization. So of course there are some new responses. So for the government, I think, as for example, for the government of, of OIE, and I actually represent the government a little bit as well because currently I'm working for the private office of His Highness Sheikh Saker. So government should be still a little bit cautious and chair can take the best practices in the world. Let's see what will be in El Salvador, you know, let's say even six months, one year. Liechtenstein, Switzerland, Estonia, they're very much advanced, I would say, in digital space. So let's see, let's have a look, let's take best, you know, practices, pros and cons. And I'm sure the government of the OE, they take, um, they take it carefully and I'm sure they will come with their, like, the best practice for the country. Yeah, so it's 
very nice points there. I think, you know, when you're thinking about a government adopting any cryptocurrency, which is a decentralized form of currency, it's, it's obviously, in some respects, potentially a threat to the existing system, right? Because currently we have central banks who have a legal right pursuant to, for example, the political, uh, well, the, the establishment. So in the US, you have Congress and the Senate and the executive giving power to the central bank to issue the currency, i.e. the US dollar. Here we have the central bank of the UAE. Around the world, it's the same thing, right? When you're adopting a cryptocurrency as legal tender, you're effectively giving a decentralized currency, which is potentially controlled by parties outside the given jurisdiction, i.e., if, you know, if, if, we, if we have Bitcoin being transacted as a legal currency in the United Kingdom, but the United Kingdom doesn't have power to control Bitcoin, from a legal perspective, you know, from, from, you know, from the parties, political per perspectives, and, and the central banks, they, they don't know. It's, 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 it's a sense of uncertainty, right? How can they sort of administer that? But I guess my question to you is, if this world is increasingly being moved in this direction, do you think, you know, do you think the, 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 the powers that be, you know, the, 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 the political parties, the legal systems, do you think they have any choice? I think they always have choice because they actually have the power and they have institutionals, you know, already in place and the authority. Uh, but of course, if there is an evolution, there is an evolution. So um, we keep changing, you know, and sometimes because there is an institute of government, of, you know, authority, sometimes they are not as agile and not flexible to change. So that's why there is, I would say, like evolution that is coming from outside. So for the wise government, the ideal would be actually to pay attention to what's going on, not to be in denial, not to really put just restrictions for whatever coming new, because in this way we will never, you know, um, keep up with the progress and just uh, the countries will just start to, you know, um, lose their pace. Um, so, but again, I would say, um, Government also has responsibility for the human beings, for citizens, so still people should be protected. So there will be, still should be some protection for the rights, for the rights of investors and the people, but just find the compromise. But, you know, be really, I would say, attentive to change that's happening and to be agile and to be flexible also with these changes. Um, yes, I would also, uh, com um, in a point of view that, uh, of course, you know, for e uh, every government, to, to the part of the power is to control financial system and to put, like, rules how the financial system of particular country within sovereignty will work. And this is a really huge power. And none of the countries would be willing to give away this power. So, yeah, and, and, and that's why I think we still have to, from, again, like a little bit legal, a theoretical perspective, uh, look at the legal regulation from public law, which is fully regulatory, and private law. And in the private law actually dominates a principle, everything is allowed, but is not clear, uh, uh, strictly prohibited by the law. So it's more like free will. And I think that, that today still we're, um, we're in a stage when the governments, if we look over the world in different parts of the world, so governments are trying to choose different approaches. In some countries like in UAE, it's very favorable, like legal regime, trying to come, please develop your business, be proactive, uh, consult us, guide us, how can we help you to, to, in order to develop the business, to give a benefit and facilitate to the society's needs. We see countries which are taking a different uh, approach, banning cryptocurrencies, saying mm -hmm. it's absolutely banned, we don't like allow it. Yeah, but they, they have their reasons, you know, so that some countries are saying they stand by, like, let's watch and see what others are doing, you know, so. But at the same time, obviously, it's happening. If we look to the European Union right now, it's very actively moving forward with a new regulation about the, 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 the digital market, how to put in, uh, in, in, in order some kind of regulatory rules, uh, as the same as Jan also all, already mentioned. Because, too, from the government side, how to protect financial stability of the countries. 
and at the same time how to protect maybe maybe the weaker market players consumers that you know that the still the companies which are providing like digital assets and a lot of the use cases on decentralized finance that they are uh, conducting fair uh, commercial practices that there is uh, no fraud and uh, of course there's absolutely legitimate reasons why government should be involved and interfere in the market but still I think you know the beauty of the digital assets and blockchain and 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 and, and the technology is that it still stays in the best side of the private law whereas the free will is more important great points all Let's move this direction, this, this conversation in a, in a different direction now. You've, you've sort of referenced some points that were quite interesting about regulation, and I just want to touch on something that Jordan Belfort discussed uh, the other day. He said that when a market gets regulated, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it doesn't usually go down, it goes up. And one of the main reasons that's the case is because it effectively gives the right to institutions and bigger players to enter the market. So we've kind of seen that right now. I mean, uh, in the UAE, for example, we've seen the adoption of new regulations in the DIFC. We have the ADGM that have passed laws uh, in favor of, of uh, issuance of tokens. And I, I kind of wanted to talk to you about securities because a lot of people here who are maybe building crypto companies, they are, are going to be issuing some form of cryptocurrency, which could be construed as a security. And if that's the case, they have significant obligations they need to think about, right? Things like registration, etc. I mean, what, what, is, what are your views on, on this point? You know, I'm curious maybe to hear from you, Yana, first. Do you think cryptocurrencies are securities? Or do you think, you know, they, they sit in a different domain and require some other new, some new regulations around them? Um, no, I don't consider cryptocurrencies security. In my opinion, security should have an underlying asset. You know, either it's a right or it's an asset, but it should be something, you know, behind the story. So um, cryptocurrency, I still am a little bit conservative in looking at cryptocurrencies. A lot of good potential, but as well for me, it's a lot of speculation, it's a lot of scams happening, so on. But me personally, I'm a big supporter of security tokens offering. So, for example, I'm well uh, familiar with the um, regulation from Liechtenstein. They have this blockchain act and, you know, some other acts uh, in support of security token. So, for me, this is like really the proper way forward. Because on the one hand, yes, there is a security, you use the definition of security, there is a certain assets, there is you no know, certain understanding what's going on, uh, how investor is secured, you know, what's the program, what's the plan, there are memorandum in place, it's all confirmed, you know, by regulator, like in Switzerland or in Liechtenstein, so it's all pretty straightforward. On the other way, it's, it's cheaper to, you know, raise capital, let's, for example, say IPO, which company could uh, you know, follow this very complicated and expensive way to raise funds via IPO? Security tokens offerings, yes, it costs money, but we speak about completely different amount. So it really allows um, you to raise capital with much less costs, but investors, they're also sure, um, okay, they're never 100% guarantee, but at least they have some kind of confirmation and idea what's going on with the company, uh, what's the plan, the program, what are the assets behind this. So they invest, I would say, much easier with the comfort that they would be investing in ICO for sure. But on the other hand, uh, also it's much easier for an investor. So you don't need a broker, you don't need some kind of institution in between, some mediators in between. You just open account, let's say on exchange here, yeah, and you buy, you're not limited with the 50,000 or 100,000 as a professional investor. You can actually invest just like a little bit of money, select a company of your choice and potentially have a profit. So I personally really support the development of security tokens offering platform. Yeah, if we talk about uh, uh, security and uh, crypto assets, uh, digital assets, so uh, we have to actually, uh, today the market uh, shows already that uh, we lawyers have to think about actually I will use this very complicated term, legal taxonomy of digital assets, because we are not talking only about like cryptocurrency. So if you talk about digital assets and cryptocurrency and tokens, already today we can see that uh, 
already practiced so that we have like utility tokens, we have security tokens, and security token is not obligatory the same as we would as lawyers consider as security according to the security laws. Right, so because the security, if you look uh, like in general definition, is a financial instrument which holds some kind of some type of monetary value, and this is what Diana um, explained very well. Also, that we can talk about security a token as a security when there is underlying asset. And then we turn to the now uh, topic which was discussed uh, today a lot already: NFTs. And we, if we talk about, for example, um, tokenized real estate, then, you know, we can think that there is some kind of, you know, these characteristics which tend to be something what we in a traditional capital market would see uh, uh, as a securities. And uh, uh, as I'm saying, from a legal point of view, of course, it's very interesting to come up with the precise definitions and different categories of digital assets to define them precisely and based on that, also to see what would be the appropriate regulation for that. You know, because uh, as you mentioned also today in some of the regulations, also we see that there is a requirement to clearly define whether you're uh, in your decentralized finance project, are you going to use security token or utility token, right? All great points, salient points. So now maybe moving further away from security tokens and towards the NFT space. You know, very exciting space for me, obviously, as we're very much invested in that area. A lot of people here might be also curious about what is it, what are the legal implications of NFTs, right? <coughs> and I think the problem with the law often is that it fails to catch up with innovations fast enough. So the IP rights, the intellectual property rights around NFTs, I don't think they have been adequately captured necessarily through regulation. So if I own an NFT right now, I may be able to show that I own that on the blockchain. But if I go to court, I don't know if I can uphold my ownership. I don't think, I'm just quite curious, there's a really funny meme going around uh, on Twitter right now where there's this divorce court happening and there's like, you know, the, 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 the divorcees and they're fighting over their NFTs, you know, in the, in the middle. And I, I'm, I'm curious, do, do, do you think, you know, the property rights of NFTs, uh, will those be upheld on a legal basis? Let me um, start with Jana. Um. <laughs> I can say that, of course, there are a lot of questions because it's completely uh, immature and just, you know, raising up sector, industry, whatever you call it, technology. So, of course, it's just like the very, very beginning and there is a lot of potential, but on the way of growing and developing, you know, some new problems or ideas or, uh, you know, examples of usage are just coming up. So, I think personally blockchain in general really helps a lot in securing intellectual property rights. Um, really, especially we are talking about all this creativity and, uh, you know, artists, industries, and uh, um, so um, with the adoption of smart contracts, and again, it's another concept I personally also support a lot. With the adoption of smart contracts, um, it's much less guarantee for authors, you know, to get rewards for their, um, for their, for their acts of, of creativity, so-called. So everything just go, you know, independent, autonomic, it's automated, so you don't need to, to think about that somebody can cheat you, you know, or not to pay you. Everything just put via algorithm, via smart contract, and once your image or your song, your tune is used, you just receive an award. So um, I know that there is still like a little bit of discussion of what is actually smart contract. You know, even some lawyers I spoke to recently to PwC, for example, they consider is a smart contract is really a legal contract. You know, when you speak to some IT people, they would say, no, 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 this is just a chain of algorithms. It's nothing to do with the legal contract. But again, it's just a very emerging sector. So we are just like, you know, in the very beginning. But potential for securing intellectual property rights, it's, it's really huge. Um, I think that yes, NFTs and intellectual property rights, it's a very important uh, topic right now. And I would say that uh, I, um, 
I would say that there is not vacuum in uh, legal regulation if we talk about protection of property rights of NFTs. And we've seen already some of the legal cases uh, around the world when uh, these issues are uh, already uh, evaluated. And uh, as a one example, also I just preparing for today's discussion also, I remember the LeBron slam dunk video on NBA when somebody wanted to reproduce, you know, whatever, you know, so it's, uh, it's already protected. If you go back to the history of the copyright and protection, we have to go, about, go back to 1886 when the Berne Convention was adopted. It's still the main document all over the world to protect copyrights. And this is a just new uh, uh, way how the copyrights can appear and can be detected on the blockchain as well. So, you know, of course, you know, it will require also some specific regulation, but if we talk about that anybody who comes into the blockchain ecosystem and try to buy NFTs or sell NFTs or use NFTs, they have to understand that still there is not vacuum, still there are copyrights. If somebody is created, somebody put an effort and made some piece of art, audiovisual or whatever, so it is protected by definition already you know so and um, but of course you know in terms how to for example in a in a in a court in litigation process how to uh, how to provide evidences how to fix them this is a question you know which is more technical but maybe not so legal but more technical how to do it and at the same time, I think for NFTs, uh, it's a great potential. It's a great potential if we try to protect intellectual property, if we try to protect uh, copyrights, trademarks, patents, you know. So there's a lot of scope already now. Like we see that a lot of the fashion brands, they try to join their forces and to protect their brands, you know, to have NFTs that you can follow if my purse is really made by, I don't know, Louis Vuitton or Gucci or whatever. So, you know, it is already absolutely new use cases how we can use NFTs. Why? But it's because to protect intellectual property. Yeah, very interesting points there. I think most recently because Nike just uh, bought out Artifact. Um, now we'll, I'm curious to see you know, what's going to happen there because they've obviously purchased a number of the underlying NFT assets relating to Artifact itself. So I'm curious to see wh where it goes. You know, I'm sure in the coming years we might see legal cases which will, in, will determine the, the direction. Um, the fact is the bigger players are now getting into the space and they're sort of pushing the direction in, a, in a hopefully a more positive place for the NFT market. Um, I'm sort of going to wrap this up because we're kind of short on time, but I think we had a very, very wonderful discussion across three different very interesting areas, you know, legal tender, securities, IP protection. These are all very, very important considerations for a company. You know, if a company is looking to incorporate an, a crypto company, they, they want to think about whether they can transact in crypto. They want to think about whether they can issue tokens. They also want to think about whether their um, assets or whatever they're producing will be protected by the blockchain. I want to thank you both for being on the panel, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed a really, really the interesting chat uh, on the legal implications here in crypto. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much.